welcome back to Rodder's Garage. Today, I'm gonna to be disassembling the original engine out of the Yard Art Model A here, getting it completely tore down, inspected, and uh, basically at that point, I'm gonna send the block out to the machine shop, have them clean it up, and probably get the crank coming. I'm gonna get a new SCAT oil, uh, pressurized oiling crank with counterweights and all that good stuff on it. And for that, you need to line bore these things. So, I'm gonna get it all tore down and boxed up, make sure the block is good, and then I can start ordering some parts to get this thing together. Let's start taking it apart and see what kind of condition it's in. All right, well we got our cylinder head off now and to be totally honest with you, I thought it would be a little bit worse in here. This thing was was fairly clean. If we go back to the beginning, I think it was cylinder one or two that I vacuumed that big pile of garbage out that was sitting on top of the valves that I could see down through the head. And cylinder one, if I'm not mistaken, had no compression the first time I started it. And obviously it must have came back a little bit after it was running a little bit, after it cleared the seats out. I'm really curious to see what the seats actually look like once we get the valves out, especially on that cylinder one where it had no compression in the beginning. I'm going to go ahead and pull the oil return tube on the side over here, get the rocker box off. We'll pull the valves out and take a peek at those seats right away. And I'll probably also take all the studs out of the deck right away too. Going well, nice and easy with the stud extractor. We'll use a wrench just to be safe, or a ratchet. Not bad. All right guys, well I just got the distributor drive here out of the rocker box and taking a look inside. This thing is uh, pretty impressively clean. No rust, nothing uh, major for debris in here. Not even really any sludge. We got a little bit here at the back, just a tiny remnant at the back side of the engine. The rest is pretty darn clean, that's impressive. I know uh, going way back to the beginning in the Will It Run video, when I basically just started this up without removing anything or inspecting or looking at it. Uh, I know that bothered a lot of people. But I did know from the beginning that whether I put this engine in this car or a different uh, banger or whatever I would have laying around, I do have a couple of Model A's, I knew that I was going to go ahead and put a insert bearing crank in here. So to me, I really didn't care too much um, if it was sludged out or anything like that. It was more just to see if the car would run and drive. and. Uh, luckily enough, it was super clean inside, so I don't think we're going to have any problems with that. One other thing I thought was interesting or kind of funny in the Will It Run video too, was a couple of guys said, well, at least he checked the oil, but I never changed it. 
Now I was going to change the oil in this before we originally started it, but the bung on the bottom of the pan down here where the threads are in that the plug goes in was actually turning in the sheet metal. It's actually, it's actually leaking a little bit right now because that's spinning in the pan. So I'll have to make my own bung and weld it in here later. But the original oil is still in here from last year. The original stuff that came in it when I took it out of that little flower garden is still in here. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the oil pan vertically like this. I'm just going to pull the bolts, drop it straight down. We'll take a look inside of there. I'm kind of curious to see what that looks like down there. If the crankcase and the oil pan look just as clean as the rocker box, this was really a super, super clean engine. So I'm going to get the tools out, pull that pan off. Let's inspect that next. Not too bad in the crankcase either. We'll take a look up in here. This thing is, it's a very, very clean engine. That's super impressive to me. Um, the oil in the pan that I never changed actually, I mean, it's dirty. It's, it's old as the hills. It's got to be from the 60s yet, but uh, even that doesn't really look too bad. Um, you can see there's a little bit back here. I don't know if you guys are going to see that. A little bit of swirling. A little bit of swirling here and that's because there actually was some moisture in the pan some water I picked up the oil pump here a second ago and I'll show you it, it did have some crud in it down here on the bottom we can see see the stains from the water in the bottom of the pan so it did have a little water in it and that probably wasn't the best thing to be running it like that but for the short amount of time I did I think everything here is probably still gonna be good even though we're not going to be using any of this stuff. But even though we're not using it, it doesn't mean we should erect it in the first place. So maybe someone else needs it at some point in time, or maybe we'll do another banger at some point that's going to be more of a stock build and we'll need these parts. So uh, I think at this point, we'll go ahead and pull that timing cover and get the valves popped out. Then we can start pulling rods in the crankshaft. I saw in the engine so far right up here in the timing gear cover let's not lose this all right guys so the next step here is I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the keepers off all the springs on the valves I did two already just to check if this worked out my regular spring compressor um, and it does it works pretty good otherwise we could have used pliers or you know special tools that they make but I don't have any of that stuff so basically I'm just gonna go ahead and Put my spring compressor in here, pull up, try not to pinch my finger if it slips like that again. Alright, so now that we got all the keepers off the valves, we can pull them up. They do not come all the way out. So we'll just pull them up as far as they go. Like that. We'll get the springs out of the way right away. All 
All right, so at this point I have all my springs out of the way. The next step here is because the valves have a bigger bottom on them, as you can see there, they do not fit up through the guide, so we have to push all the guides out. Now I don't have the special little tool they make for those, but I did notice that a few of these, like that one, are loose. So I'm gonna just take a screwdriver up in there and lightly push on the other ones and see if they don't just come right out like that. Not the back one. And this one did. All right, four came out, four didn't. Just gonna try a little love tap. Nope. All right, well this is what I came up with for my valve guide removal tool. That's kind of what the real one looks like, except the real one's a lot nicer. Hopefully this gets the last three valve guides out of it, and it should and I will have to order myself the correct tool to have on hand for in the future, but let's put it back on here and see if we can get this one out now. Just bottoms out against the guide. I am going to take the screwdriver and just hold it down a little bit. Perfect. So with our valve train all dropped out of here, we can go ahead and start taking the rods out here, pull all the cotter pins on the nuts, get them loosened up and we can check out what the babbits actually look like in here. <laughs> Not too bad. Impressive. All right, guys, well, I pulled a couple caps on these two rods here real quick just to show you guys what it actually looked like in there in the Babbitt. And uh, I guess they weren't the worst. They pretty much all look the same. And as for the crankshaft here, you guys saw already, that thing spins super nice yet. All the journals for the rods are pretty much perfect. There's not a single mark on any of them on this crank. So... That was really in good condition as well. We'll go ahead and pull the mains next, inspect those, and that pretty much wraps up stripping the block. Alright guys, well I'm about ready to pull the crankshaft out of this thing. I loosened up the bolts that come out the top of the block for the front two main caps. Um, and basically I'm about ready to pull those out. I got the cotter pins out and they're loose. While I had the block upright, I noticed something that's actually pretty seriously damaged on this engine block. 
that I didn't even notice when we pulled the pistons out of it. So it could potentially render this thing um, possibly not salvageable for what I want to do with it. I'm not sure yet. We'll do a little bit of measuring on that in a second, but uh, let me get the crankshaft out of the way. I'll flip it back over and I want to show you guys some major damage in cylinder number four on this thing that I don't think is going to come out uh, even with a four inch bore. I don't know if we're going to clean that up. All right, I'll show you a quick view of the mains here, what I found on these caps. Uh, center one, that is actually part of the bearing, the Babbitt material here. Chunked out, there was a big old hole in here, right there where it was crumbling apart. Yeah, that's the condition of the center. The crank actually uh, feels and looks good yet. It was just the Babbitt material or the bearing, if you will, uh, that was damaged. This, not even a groove in there, that's nice. Front one, uh, pretty much the same on the crankshaft. Crank is in perfect shape in this thing, I would, I would say. And then our front cap here, uh, Starting to wear down on the edges, but not as bad as that center main. I'll go ahead and get the crankshaft out of the way now. As we're looking at the inserts here on the top side, well, they're getting pretty chunky on the edge, on the lip edge of them, especially the front one here. Back one seems fair. All right, so the main Babbitt bearings were obviously getting there. Uh, getting wore down a little bit that center one's chunked out pretty good also before I put the main cap uh, the rear main back on I'm going to show you the edge of this The edge of the rear bearing was actually cracked as well. You can see there right through the edge All the way to the inside of it That's yeah, so a one quick look down here in the crankcase. This engine was super super clean Very nice all right, so let's roll this over quick, and I'm going to show you what uh, what the damage is. And not that way, because my bolt's too long. So, cylinder number four. This is what uh, this is what I saw. If we can see that, look at that right there. There is a very large gouge in the front side of cylinder number four now as soon as i saw that i thought to myself oh man i i probably did that by starting it and you know maybe the rings were broke or something but that is a i try to get some better light here that is a severely deep hole right here and for the short amount of time that i ran this thing i really have a hard time believing that even a broken a broken ring wouldn't even have caused that i don't know what that would have been but that is a very deep hole. We're going to try to measure that a little bit here in a second. But also on the other side over here, you can see there's some pretty good lines gouged on this side as well. Going vertical in there. Now, these center ones here, they're pretty good, pretty big scratches. Those would bore out for sure at, at 125 over. This one over here, uh, this might be the deal breaker on this engine for me. I'm not sure. I'd hate to sleeve it or deal with anything like that it'd be nice if it would just clean up but yeah that top part right here that is really gouged in there almost as if something broke at one point in time and the rod came up or the piston turned and did that which very well could be the case because let me go over here to the box of parts and grab this piston here this is the one out of number four in the damaged cylinder and this one here is out of three. So once I saw that damage in cylinder number four, I decided to stop, go grab all my pistons, and I laid them out on the table over there, actually, and started inspecting the pistons, basically, to see which one would have potentially caused those marks in the cylinder. The thing is, none of the pistons have any type of major marks on them at all that would have indicated that type of damage inside the cylinder, broken ring-wise or anything. Now, cylinder number four did have a couple of broken rings. Uh, actually, it was probably the oil ring. That fell apart when I started messing with it, but that sure wasn't the cause of that type of damage in this cylinder. This piston's out of cylinder three. Look at the size here of the wrist pin in that, how thin this actually is for a wrist pin diameter. 
And we're also gonna look at the sides of the piston here quick. The sides of the piston, even just for markings, um, was that S slash O, that's all it says on both sides there. And that's pretty much it. Now the front three pistons are identical to that one. The piston that came out of cylinder number four, check this out. Look at the size of the wrist pin in here. That is way thicker than the other three. And this piston here actually on the other side says Ford right on it. This is the only piston that says Ford on it. Now as for the rods themselves, they pretty much look identical uh, on all four cylinders, but this piston was definitely replaced in this engine at one point in time. Just on basically the wrist pin diameter, we know this one says Ford, none of the other ones do. And actually if you kind of look at the way this uh, slot is cut in the bottom of this piston over the skirt, look at the way that one is, and then we'll come over here and look at this one. It's a little bit different. This one kind of goes high side here, comes down, and there's a little, little bracing put on here where the wrist pin comes in, cast into the piston, where this one does not have that on either side. So at one point in time, cylinder number four, piston, and more than likely rod was replaced. My guess is that damage occurred in this cylinder. They went out, dropped the pan, probably pulled the head, and slapped a new piston and rod in there and put it back together, maybe did a light hone on it and just left the mark in the cylinder wall and let her rip. Uh, that's pretty much the only way I could think that this possibly could be damaged this severely with no damage on the piston whatsoever. Let me try to measure this out just a little bit and see exactly how deep into the cylinder wall that goes. All right, so standard bore size, it would be three and seven eighths on a Model A engine. Um, just to verify, I wanna check that out or get a close idea here. Well, where the damage is in cylinder four, we're at 3.956. Uh, that's awfully close to four. I do not know if that's gonna clean up. Yeah, that's a pretty uh, pretty good chunk out of that back cylinder wall, and that might make or break whether we can use this or if we have to sleeve that or, or whatever, but someone put it back together like that, and it obviously was running like that, so I think the next best thing is, or the best thing for me to do with this next, is maybe I'll do a quick wire wheel on it, and then I'm probably going to go ahead and take it out to the engine shop, have him look at it real quick, see if he thinks it'll clean up, and uh, I guess maybe just have him hot tank it, and... I guess we could start off by boring that one cylinder and see what it cleans up at, see if it's going to look good. And if that does, I think the rest will be totally fine. Now the other thing with the other three cylinders too is they mic'd out at uh, 3915 and standard bore uh, should be 3875, so we are a little bigger. Hopefully, like I said, if we can clean up number four cylinder, at a four inch bore, or even a 30 over a four inch bore, uh, I'd say we're in business with this thing. So all in all, the thing was in amazing shape other than that damage in there. And I think we have something really great to work with as long as we can figure out a solution for that cylinder wall damage. I was cleaning up my mess and that stuff, that damage in that cylinder, number four was driving me nuts. And I kind of figured something out real quick here. Let's, uh, let me show you some math. All right, so what I did was I went in the bore and I measured that depth once more on that gouge over here in the cylinder wall. Where it's gouged, I, uh, well here, let me see if I get the reflection out of the camera. Where it's gouged, I'm 3,956. Now all the bore is pretty much measured out to 3,915. And that's all the bores, front to back, are about 3915 at the current moment. Where that hole is in the block, or that big gouge, I'm 3956. So if I subtract that, uh, subtract the bore size from that, that means that that gouge is about 41 thou into the cylinder wall on that side. That's a lot. At 41 thousandths into the cylinder wall, that's some pretty good damage. But if I do the math on a four inch piston, and subtract the bore size that all the holes are at right now, I'm taking 85 thou out of those cylinder walls. Now that's split between both sides of the cylinder wall, obviously, because if you're boring a round hole 85 over, you're actually only pulling uh, 
you know, 42 and a half thou out of each side of the cylinder wall because it's 85 total. But if I pull 42 and a half thou out of the cylinder walls on both sides, uh, uh, it should technically clean up. If that gouge is 41, even 42 thou into the cylinder wall, it should clean up with a four inch bore in this thing. So that gives me hope, gives me a little hope, friends. Or we could go 4030, I'd be happy with that too, a 30 over, uh, four inch piston 30 over. So I think it's gonna clean up without a sleeve. We'll find out. Anyway, like I said, guys, thanks for watching. Till next time.